didn't know which way he was going and didn't know how the world was was going to treat him turned his life over to Jesus and said I don't think you can really do this I think I'm too far gone but now here I am you, you've got a test in front of you and Jesus who shed his blood on Calvary shed his blood just for me and I was washed truly washed in the blood of the Lamb and uh, last Sunday night I, I called my own pastor I'm, I'm thankful he's still alive I think he's 82 years old and I said do you know what happened 36 years ago today and he said don't have a clue he said what happened 36 years ago today uh, I said I gave my life to Jesus and you baptized me he said it ain't been that long <laughs> I feel the same way uh, the blood of Jesus is what has saved me I, I don't know I don't know what other folks say and I don't know what they think about about salvation but a sacrifice had to be made that sacrifice was personally made for me and the reason I say it was personally made for me is because I know I was washed wasn't sprinkled I was washed in the blood of the lamb so Hebrews chapter 10 we're going to start at verse 14. There you go, stand right up. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now I'm going to throw one more in on this one. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. You may be seated. I, I'd really like to preach a sermon about about how you mess up and how if you sin on purpose there's no more remission for that sin God's not in the God, God's not in the basis of on today and off tomorrow that's not what the sermon is but I, but I need to bring that up from the various earliest of times we're going to talk about blood for just a minute or two two boys were given the responsibility to worship God. They were told how to worship God. They were told that they would worship God, and they do that by making a sacrifice of blood because of their father's sins. Those two boys actually had a name. What was the name of Cain? What was the name of Abel? first instance of murder in the Bible Abel, Abel, Abel took his animal and he shed its blood on an altar and made the sacrifice and the, the Bible teaches that uh, the smoke went up and God accepted it and then Cain decided that he that he started his own church. He just did it with vegetables. He raised a garden. He was going to give God something out of the garden, and he made a sacrifice that wasn't what God had told him to do. Blood was not shed. God rejected his sacrifice. I think throughout my life of the things that God has accepted for me, he accepted the day that I realized that I was lost without it. And he, he told me the exact same thing that morning. That blood had to be shed. The precious blood of Jesus Christ had to be shed and had to cover my sins. And I had to accept that covering of that blood for forgiveness of sins. And I had to ask for that blood to cover my sins. And I, and I did that. 
And, and I, don't, I don't know about other folks. And, I, I don't know how far you've gone in sin, and it really doesn't matter how far I went in sin. What I do know is that I was full of sin. Sin was around me. I catered to sin, and I worked for Satan. I was under his power. I was under his direction until somebody told me that Jesus' blood could wash me and cleanse me, cleanse me and get rid of my iniquity. And it, there was something in that blood because that preacher would preach and that blood spoke to me from his word. Ooh. Listen, if I were ever going to write, if I were ever going to write a, a, a gospel song, it would be that the blood spoke to me. <laughs> because it did. I can sing that song because of me. And God came down that morning in the garden and he said, some of the drawn fellas can't sit for drawn. He said, Abel's blood cries to me from the ground. What do you mean? Uh, there's life in the blood. <coughs> that blood cries to me. What have you done? Oh, uh, yes. What I decided for a sacrifice is good enough. You ever done that? Let me tell you what I believe. What do you believe? You can believe anything you want, but I want you to know something this morning. I, I really do. You really can believe anything you want. You just can't be saved to believe anything that you want. You have to have the blood applied to your life, and it has to be a blood bought way. Jesus' blood cleanses you from all it says unrighteousness. Cain was jealous that Abel did the right thing. I see the same thing in this world today. Now, the next example that I'd like to give you is a little place called Egypt. Joseph had, had lived for, for God Yeshua and had done what was right and his brothers had sold him off and his brothers had thrown him in a pit. Even his daddy at one time rejected him over a dream. He said, his daddy looked at him, he said, do you really believe, Joseph, that your mother and I are going to bow down to you because you had this dream? Yep, daddy did. Threw him in the pit, sold him off, sent him to Egypt. The next thing you know, he's running the country. Listen. What happened? When God gets involved in your life, what happens is you start following a path. You think you're going one place and you're going another one. Maybe that's the reason that I really thought through the week that God was going to let me preach on Rahab. Boy, it was true. I'm telling you. Then decided I had a sermon and sermons. But like Joseph, I looked up and there I was, and I done decided one thing. If I was going to get any sleep, I better go in there and get open my Bible and do what Jesus said, or I was not going to close my eyes. So I went. And God spoke to Moses, and he said, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. If you want to be let go this morning, I want you to know that the blood of Jesus needs to be applied to your life today. And that blood needs to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And not just if you're lost. If you have slipped back in the way, if you have been a servant to sin, if things in your life have gotten to the point where you are not living for Jesus, where there is willful sin, the Bible says there is then therefore no remission of sin, and the blood, listen to this, the blood cries out, I'm not clean anymore. And God, it says, cannot look upon sin. And the plague, the first plague that was ever done, everybody understood life. And the, the, the meaning of life and blood. God said, let my people go. And he turned the Nile into blood. I, I, I don't know what you think about it. It's kind of ridiculous the way some people look at it. And there was a 
there were two books written. One was the Iliad and the Odyssey, and and one of them was people died, and they they wrote in that book that if you drink the blood, that you could have life again. We've got people doing it today. You can go in Africa, and once a year during during a certain time, they 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 go out and get a cow or a goat, and they'll drain that blood, and everybody will drink it, and they'll have a big festival and say life is good. Is it ridiculous? Yes, it is. But there's truth in one thing. They realize from something deep inside of them that there is life inside of blood. That's where the life is. The blood of Jesus is the blood that I need to, I need to get across to you this morning no matter what. Jesus' blood really does cleanse you from all righteousness. God delivered his people. He had to go through through several plagues to do it, but he finally delivered them. And they went through Kadesh Barnea, and they started. They went across the Red Sea, and they started complaining, and, and they started going on. And and the next thing you know, that they're fussing again, and they're in trouble again. And God says, "Now, fellas, I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do. The way that I got you out of Egypt was this." I told you to go get you a lamb. And I want you to set it aside for seven days. I want you to make sure that that lamb is clean. And on a certain day, a certain night, I want you to shed that lamb's blood. We call this a type and a foreshadow of things to come. And I want you to take the blood from that and I want you to to paint it on the doorpost. Now, you, you're coming to a time of year when people believe in spirits and spooks and dogs. But I want you to know something. This wasn't, this wasn't no spook. But there was a death angel who was going to come all over Egypt. And that death angel was going to look for one thing. That death angel was going to look for the blood. <laughs> that blood was going to speak to that angel. You know what I mean? That blood was going to say, death angel, you cannot stop at this house. Same with me this morning. Yeah. The devil comes looking for me. He sees the blood upon the doorpost of my heart. And he speaks to Satan and says, Satan, you cannot cross that When Satan can't cross over Jesus' blood, it means I'm safe and secure. I got a question for you this morning. Are you safe and secure? Does Jesus' blood speak to your heart and your life? Listen, there has to come a time in your life. It really does. Where the blood does the talking for you. I've always been a pretty slick talker. I'm, I'm a salesman. I can twist things for you. Mother was talking this morning about people talking to people witnessing, and I, and I popped up and said, I can talk to a, to, to a fence post. And I reckon that nobody was around under any really drive because I've got to talk. But I'll tell you something else since I got saved, and this is just the truth. There are more people get saved in my ministry, one on one, me talking to them about Jesus, than there will ever be in this church house. If you talk to me very long, I'm going to tell you one thing for sure. October the 14th, 1976, I was vile and ugly. And the blood of Jesus was applied to my life, and now I am happy and free, and I am blessed to have everything in my life that I ever wanted. Sometimes I wonder if my sights just weren't set high enough. You know, I'm really satisfied. I'll tell you these things. Number one, next week, uh, you are going to be nice enough to have pastor's appreciation, but I cheat a little bit. Uh, I asked my son, Eddie, who, who's a wonderful singer, but I asked him to come preach. Because of everything in my life that I've been given, I've been given the knowledge that my children have had the blood of Jesus applied to the life. The only thing that I've said throughout my Christian life was once I got married was that I'm going to go on a path and that path is going to be commercial to glory. I am going to start here and I'm going to go over there and my heart 
is headed toward home. And the only way that I can go home is because of the blood of Jesus. And I have said, I want my children to follow the exact same path that I have. Now, I want you to think about this. 36 years later, next Sunday, my 31-year-old son, who loves Jesus with all of his heart, is going to stand up here and he's going to tell you about Jesus. You see, my time's just about gone. I'm ready to go. Be given everything, all the heart's desire since I got saved anyway, but what I wanted has been given to me. Friends are more important to me than money. Isn't that all? I, I'd rather see Sister Brenda's face back here than I would you give me a thousand dollar bill and Archie, listen, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade Archie for brand new Mercedes Benz. That's a dead honest fact. Been given everything that I've ever wanted. I know that the path that I've started, that my wife, you know what? She's accepted Jesus' blood on her like she gets to go to heaven too. Because of her witness, they've given their lives to Jesus. My daughter overslept yesterday and they go to church on Saturday night and she called her mommy and she said, I feel really bad, mommy, she's got two little babies. And Ruth said, what's wrong? She said, we overslept in this church. And I'm over there saying, thank you, Jesus. Not that she missed church, but that it bothered her that she didn't go to Jesus' house and hear his word. What more could I ask for? Let me tell you what I get. If they hold out to the hen like you, I get to be over there with them. And the Bible says, in that place, the blood's not going to cry out anymore. The perfect sacrifice has been given, but God the Father has raised him from the dead. Boy, I've got five pages of notes, and I ain't never going to hit hardly an every one of them. That's all right. We'll just keep going. I have to talk to you for just a minute about the blood of Jesus. Jesus was born and sent to this earth to be perfect sacrifice. You see, when that when 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 the, the Jews were in the desert, God made a way for them to put off sins for one year. The sins were not forgiven. The Bible says sins were put off for a year. And it was year after year. And they they would shed that. The blood of that lamb, just like, just like they had done at Passover, and the high priest would offer it up, and you you go before him, and your sins were put off for you a year, and then Jesus came and said he was that perfect sacrifice for sins once and for all. What does this once and for all mean? It means there's just one place in the Bible that says where sin doth abound, grace does much more abound because of the blood of Jesus. I am telling you, you do not get a license to sin, but I will tell you in all honesty that you can go to his word and it says, my little children, I would that you sin not. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with a father. So Jesus was born Listen, they came to his mommy. She was a virgin and said, you're going to bear a son. And we want you to call his name Emmanuel, the Savior of this earth. You call him Jesus. And you, he's going to be my son or the father's son. Jesus was born, lived a sinless life. Listen. He did what needed to be done so that he could be the perfect sacrifice. You want me to tell you what he knew being born and living? That his blood was going to be shed on Calvary for you. The sad part is, that blood's going to cry out to you this morning. It really is. That blood's going to speak to your heart this morning and it's going to say, why don't you, why don't you let me wash you? One place in the, in the Word it says, we're cleansed by the water of the washing of the Word. Jesus is that word and his blood represents that word, that word. And you have to know this morning that his blood was shed on Calvary. It says that they led him to Calvary like a lamb. Listen, they accused him of everything in the world. I don't, I don't know what you've accused other people for. I don't know what your life is. And this morning I'm just here to tell you that 
there, there has to be a time where you reckon for your sins, that you have to answer for your sins. And there's only going to be one thing to look for. I'd like to go over that with you this morning. God the Father is going to open up a book for you at the end of your life. And he's going to open it up and he's only going to look for one thing. He's going to look to see if the blood's been applied. Does the blood cry out to you today? You see, we know that we pass from death into life because we love the brethren. And you know I'm not going to get through this sermon because I promised Jesus this a long time ago. If you come to talk to me there where I sell trailers, you're going to hear this too. Number one, you fellas might as well get ready. I'm winding down. Number one, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Your blood at one time or the other is going to be tainted by sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want you to know something this morning. If you die in your sins where God is, you cannot go. The blood has to be applied. Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10 says, But what saith it? The word is not the, I might just change that around a little bit just for you this morning. Jesus is near you. <laughs> Even in your heart and your mouth, which is the word of faith which we preach. If you believe that God the Father allowed his son's blood to be shed on Calvary, that they put him in a tomb that no man had ever laid. And on the third and appointed day, God the Father said, my little buddy, get up. And Jesus got up and defeated death, hell, and the grave. Then you can be saved. The only thing he has to do is call you, but what saith it? The word is not even thy heart and thy mouth. That's the word of faith which we preach. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Let me tell you what the biggest sin some of us do. We don't confess Jesus all through the week, but we'll shout glory on the weekend. Amen. Sorry, Lord. I, I threw that in there. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then he gives you the formula. Anybody ever, ever done a formula? Here's the formula. For with a mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the heart man believeth. For the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If you confess it and you believe it, thou shalt be saved. Question is, two things. This morning, Jesus' blood, does it cry out to you? Does the blood cry out to you? Oh, Brother Ed, I've been living pretty good. I'm not asking you that. This ain't about me. Lord, have mercy. I got my own problems to take care of. But does the blood speak to you and say you need to have your life washed by Jesus' blood one more time? Have you never been saved, really saved? You know, kids, most of the time when they get saved, if they ask me to talk to them, I'll tell them, I'll say, there's going to come a time in your life where you may need to do this again. What are you talking about? I mean, do it when you're serious, serious. When I was 26 years old and I decided that I was lost and I needed something to do, and I went to that altar, I was serious. Here, 36 years later, I'm going to tell you all of you this is a secret. I feel like I got saved about my class a week. I really am clean, but I try to keep the devil out of my life. It's Jesus' blood crying out to you today. Can you feel Jesus speak to your heart? Bow your heads for just a second. Then I'm gonna, after that, I'm going to ask him to come up and sing. Just for a second. Are you here this morning and feel like that you've come short of the glory of God? And that Jesus is blood, his spirit is speaking to your heart and saying, I need you to take a step closer. Would you just raise your hand and put it right back down? Jesus, I've missed the mark. God bless that hand. Would it be another one? God bless your hand, baby. 
I miss the mark. God bless that hand. God bless that hand. Listen, there are folks that are serious about doing what's right. Would one of those people be you? As they sing, there's an altar up here. You can ask Jesus' blood to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Let's all stand. Silently, while we wait, while they play and sing, would you just slip out of your seat and say, today is the day that Jesus' is blood is calling out to me. Would you come? Brother, Eddie, I've really not been doing what I tried. I really need to make a commitment, a real commitment. I'd like to come to the altar. I'd like somebody to pray with me. Would you come this morning and somebody will come with you? Would you just slip out and say, here I am. I really, really want to make a commitment to do what's right. Would you come? Would you do it? Jesus is there and he says, listen. Behold. Brother, the brother Akin said it. Behold, I stand at the door. I knock. make a commitment to Jesus that I'm going to do what's right. Would you do that this morning? Could you do it? Would you do it? Do you feel like that you've messed up? you really like to have a brand new start this morning? Would you just come up? Listen, if you don't want nobody else to pray with you, I'll pray with you. Would you come? Would you do it? Would you do it? Well, I'm going to let them finish singing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Brother James, you and Ronnie come up. The singers have blessed us. They've come all this way to sing for you. The only thing that they asked out of the church was a love offering. It's up to you to give that love offering, isn't it? It's up to you to, to help them on their way. Now, I'm going to ask prayer over that offering. And as they, as they bring the, the plates back to you, I, I'd like for you to give us as God bless you and, and help these folks along the way. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, as I come before you, I thank you for the blood zone. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for Brother Atkins. I thank you for Angela. I thank you for all those that have testified, all those that have prayed. Bless us, God. Go with us. Bless this offering. Help them on their way, Jesus. We love you with all of our heart. Amen. Listen, it's not too late to pray. Jesus speaks to your heart. You come up and say, Brother Ed, I got something I just want to pray about. It has nothing to do with my salvation. It has to do with the prayers.